Here's a live look at the U.S. Capitol. What a difference a day makes. The sun shining after a very dark day. It's much calmer than yesterday when rioters violently stormed the building, trying to stop Congress from certifying the November election results. CBS's Deborah Alfaron tells us what federal investigators are doing in the wake of the crisis at the Capitol. The FBI is asking for help finding those behind Wednesday's assault at the Capitol. The agency set up a website for people to upload photos and videos of rioters who smashed their way into the building. The government did this to us. We were normal, good, law-abiding citizens, and you guys did this to us. Some pro-Trump protesters breached the Senate chamber. One sat at a desk inside Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office, leaving a note saying, we will not back down. They don't get to steal it from us. Police fired at a woman who tried to climb through a window. She later died. Today, it's quiet here at the Capitol. 150 additional National Guard members are maintaining a perimeter around the complex, bringing the total to 300. Congress was in the process of confirming President-elect Joe Biden's electoral college win at the time of the riot. Lawmakers took cover anywhere they could. Shots are being fired inside the Capitol chamber. New York Congressman Tom Swazi captured the chaos on his cell phone. Uh, I started to leave the chamber and started to hear pop, pop, pop. In a statement, President Trump said there will be an orderly transition on January 20th, but Washington's mayor has extended a public emergency order through Inauguration Day because of concerns of more violence. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Sources tell CBS News some of President Trump's own cabinet members have been whispering about whether to move forward with formal proceedings to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove him immediately from office less than two weeks before his term ends. Vice President Mike Pence ignored questions about it last night. The 25th Amendment allows the vice president to take over office should the president become unable to carry out his duties. Both the vice president and a majority of the cabinet would need to pursue it. Well, there's a growing chorus of calls from Illinois congressmen for President Trump to be removed. Within the last hour, Democratic Congressman Mike Quigley, Danny Davis, Sean Caston, Robin Kelly, Lauren Underwood, and Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger called for that 25th Amendment to be invoked for impeachment. Kinzinger also released this statement. The liars and conspiracy authors are already at it again this morning with false narratives about yesterday's disaster. Here's the truth. The president caused this. The president is unfit and the president is unwell. The congressmen aren't the only ones from Illinois joining the call to remove President Trump from office. CBS 2's Mugo Digway is live outside of Trump Tower in River North with what other lawmakers from the state are saying. Mugo. Yeah, good morning, Ryan. As you mentioned, Lauren Underwood is one of those calling for the president to be removed. She says he is to blame for much of what happened at the Capitol yesterday. And she also released a statement which says, in part, by his own admission, he sought to overturn an election and the will of the American people. Our democracy is at stake, and we cannot wait until Inauguration Day to see him removed from office. It must be immediate. Now, what was supposed to be a routine counting of the electoral votes yesterday turned into a complete mess after an angry mob of rioters crashed over barriers, broke windows, and breached the Capitol in an effort to stop the process. Earlier in the day, the president had encouraged his supporters to head to the U.S. Capitol. Members of Congress had to leave the floor, but later reconvened. But this sacred place was desecrated by a mob today on our watch. This temple to democracy was defiled by thugs. I have spent my entire adult life defending our democracy, but I never, never thought it would be necessary to defend it from an attempted violent overthrow in our nation's own Capitol building. Senator Tammy Duckworth, who you just heard from there, also released another statement this morning. She says what happened in the Capitol yesterday was a painful reminder that democracy is fragile and it's up to every one of us, elected officials and citizens alike, to work to keep it. Now, Sir Trump Tower behind me this morning, it was blocked off, all entrances closed. We've noticed right now some entrances are back open, but there's still several police officers parked outside. 